Today we're going to make our fish out of clay. So I've gathered some materials. I have my plastic bag with tape on it. I still need to write my name on it. I have my fish template that's cut out and ready to use. I have some items to make textures out of, some my stylus tool so that I can slip and score. I have my clay. I have a newspaper pad to keep my fish on as I'm making it, and I have some water for slipping and scoring. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my name on my piece of tape so that it is ready for me to store my things in and my class code. And then the first thing I need to do with my clay is I need to go ahead and wedge it. To wedge it, you're going to take your block of clay or your piece of clay and press it down against the table and stand it up tall and press it down against the table, stand it up tall, press it down. You need to do this about 10 to 15 times. This removes any air bubbles that are in the clay and it also aligns the platelets or the layers so that they are flexible. So once I've done that, um, I'm ready to go ahead and flatten my piece of clay out. So to flatten it, um, I'll just gently push it against the table. I'm doing this on my plastic bag so that it does not stick to the table and I can get it off. You notice that I am not pounding it to make noise, but just pressing with my hands to make it into a pancake. I want it to be a fairly even pancake, so I can flip it to make it even and try to not have lumps and bumps. And then when it's fairly thin, um, maybe as thin as um, a pencil is thick, so I could take a pencil and kind of measure see the thickness there. Um, please have your teacher check this when you think you have it thick enough. And then once you have the go-ahead from your teacher, you are ready to trace your fish. So you'll put your fish onto the piece of clay and then carefully with your wooden stylus tool or if you have a pointed plastic tool, you can just trace gently around the fish. I'm just tracing. I'm not cutting it completely out yet because if I make a mistake and I trace, I can just rub that mistake back in and I wouldn't have to re-wedge and flatten. It will be a time saving. Okay. So here's my fish shape. So for instance, if I cut, just traced and made a mistake, I can just rub that back in. So now that I have this, I can go ahead and use probably a plastic tool that's a little bit thinner than the wood stylus to go ahead and cut this out. Um, I might work from the fish out and draw longer lines than really necessary, but it will be easier to get the fish out if I do it this way. So trying to be careful to stay on those lines that I drew, but if I go slightly off, it's okay. I can fix that later. That one went slightly off. Okay, and now I will try to peel off the outside parts gently and that can just become a pile of clay that we will collect and recycle. 
So now I have my fish shape. I might want to go around and kind of smooth out any rough areas right now so that I don't have a lot of smoothing to do at the end. Okay, so I'll smooth just a little bit. You might want to do a better job than I'm doing right now. All right, so now that I have my fish shape, I can refer back to my patterns and see what I need to do. It looks like in some areas I was going to use this roller to make the squiggly line. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll where I want that. I just want it on the upper and lower fin. I might get it in other places that I don't want it. And if that happens, I can easily fix it. And it looks like I have to roll a few times to get it. But it showed up here where I don't want it. So I can just take my finger and get rid of that. Okay. And then I need to make an eye. So an eye I'm going to make three dimensional and add. So I can just take a piece of clay and roll it into a ball. And then I would be attaching this to there. And anytime I attach two pieces of clay, I have to slip and score. So I'm going to make little scratch marks where I want the eye to go and on the back of the eye. And then take a little water, and dab it, and dab it. And then when I push it down, I need to make sure that I push it down firmly so that I can see some of that water ooze out. That means that it's attached firmly. Okay, so there I have that eye attached. And then I wanted to add a dot in the middle so I can just do that with my stylus here. Okay. And then it looks like I have some lines going through my fish. And I could go ahead and draw those on. But maybe I also want to make those with coils or make some more in between with coils. So to do that, to roll a coil, it's just a long piece of clay. I can roll it out using my hand. And here's my coil. I could then measure it so that I get it the right length. And then again, I would have to slip and score. Score both of them, slip both of them, slip both of them. And again, when I push this down, I'm pushing it firmly um, so that I can see the water or the slip ooze out. And that lets me know that I attached it firmly. And then I'll want to come back and you can see score marks still. There, I want to come back and smooth those out too so I can take my finger and just kind of smooth along to smooth those out. So I might want to continue doing this for all of those lines that I drew to add some dimension to this. And then, or I could leave some and draw on, okay? Um, and then I would continue to add my patterns to this side, finish the tail off, and then when I'm done with this side, I need to do the same thing that I did on this side or something similar on the back side. So that's where you could put it on your piece of newspaper and gently do the same thing to the back side. One last thing I want to show you is you can use these templates for texture also. Um, you'll just have to wash them when you're done. But if you take your fish, so if this was my fish, and I press down into the template with it, and then gently peel it off, it will create some of the texture. That didn't, I didn't press hard enough. I'll try again. Ah, oh, that time it worked. And you'll have to be careful as you pull it off but you can see it created that texture on there. So if I wanted to do this other side, it might show up better. No, that just ruined that side, that's okay. Oops, I pressed way too hard that time. But you can see you can get a texture from the template on there too. 
You just have to be extra careful when you're doing that. All right, so then once you're done with your fish or it's time to clean up for the day, um, you're going to make sure that your fish is on your newspaper. Okay, it's okay if it hangs off a little bit. And then you're going to open up your Ziploc bag, slide your fish in, okay? Make sure all the air gets out. And then zip your zip bag shut. And then you can take your fish and we can store it, carry it with two hands like this and we'll store it in the kiln room on a shelf.